Welcome back, welcome back, any and all. Glad you all could come back to hear the word. Not only hear the word, but you doers of the word. Glory be to a higher. I hope when you woke up this morning, you told Father God, thank you. It is he that woke us up. We didn't wake ourselves up. No, we can't do that. We can't even breathe on our own, believe it or not. And I sure hope you told your loved ones that you love them when I promise tomorrow, not even the rest of this day. Not even the rest of this day. And I'm sincere when I say that. Too many people think we got a lot of time. No, you don't. No, you don't. I hope you all are saved and have given your life to Christ Jesus because we're living in the last days. And Father's looking for those to have a personal relationship with. He's looking for each person, his children, to have a personal relationship with. And um, you must seek the Lord today while he still may be found. If you don't know him, you need to know him. Please read God's word, the Holy Bible prefer. The Holy Bible, preferably the King James Version. Go down on your knees in prayer and cry out to him daily, daily. And keep crying out to him till you hear from him. Not only will he answer you, he'll begin to teach you the word of God. And um, you must live a holy life and a life of daily repentance. Because we live in his fleshly bodies and we don't sin on purpose. No, we don't live a sinful life at all. We don't sin on purpose. And you must live a daily life of repentance because we are in these fleshly bodies and the flesh is always warring with the spirit. We are out to save souls of Christ Jesus because we know that a lot of people are closing their eyes. And uh, you want, when, you, when, you, when you open those eyes, where you can open them at? You don't want to open it in hell. You want to know that when you die, your soul is going to be with the Lord. That's what you want to know. So we're trying to save souls. If you don't know the Lord, you better seek him today while you still have an opportunity. Hallelujah. You need to be baptized down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. You have to receive him into your life to be your Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Believe in his death, burial, and resurrection. Hallelujah. That being said, hallelujah. Before we begin our reading, I'll tell you the truth because I love you all and Father God loves you more. Before we begin our reading, we're going to say a prayer for children of all ages. Hallelujah. Father God, we come to you today to say thank you. Thank you, my Father. Thank you. What is day? Thank you for every day. Thank you, Father, for waking us up this morning. Thank you, Father, for keeping us. Thank you, Father, for never forsaking us. Thank you, Father, for your daily provisions. Thank you, Father, for your outpouring of love. Loving us when we could not love ourselves and loving us in spite of ourselves. Thank you, Father, that you are a keeper. You said you'll never leave us nor forsake us and you are with us even as I speak at this very moment. Thank you, Father, for your outstretched arms. May all grab hold and never let go. Thank you, Father, for your continuous love, care, protection, and keeping your children in the know. We all love you, Father. It is in your highest, holy, precious, mighty name that we say thank you, Lord, and we pray amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. Glory to your holy name. Hallelujah. Well, let us go into our reading. Jeremiah chapter 52. And by the way, this is the last chapter of the book of Jeremiah. The end of Jeremiah's writing. Jeremiah's writing ends here. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he was appointed king of Judah, and he ruled from Jerusalem for 11 years. His mother, Hamatol, was the daughter of Jeremiah from the town of Libna. Zedekiah disobeyed the Lord, just as Jehoiakim had done, and it was Zedekiah who finally rebelled against Nebuchadnezzar. The people of Judah and Jerusalem had made the Lord so angry that he finally turned his back on them. That's why horrible things were happening. In Zedekiah's ninth year as king, on the tenth day of the, of the tenth month, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylonia led his entire army to attack Jerusalem. The troops set up camp outside the city and built ramps up to the city walls. After a year and a half, all the food in Jerusalem was gone. Then on the ninth day of the fourth month, the Babylonian troops broke down, broke through the city wall. That same night, Zedekiah and his soldiers tried to escape through the gate near the royal garden, even though they knew the army, the enemy, had the city surrounded. They headed toward the Jordan River Valley, but the Babylonian troops caught up with them near Jericho. The Babylonians arrested Zedekiah, but his soldiers scattered in every direction. Zedekiah was taken to Riblah in the land of Hamath, where Nebuchadnezzar put him on trial and found him guilty. Zedekiah's sons and the officials of Judah were killed while he watched. Then his eyes were poked out. He was put in chains. 
then dragged off to Babylon and kept in prison until he died. Jerusalem was captured during Nebuchadnezzar's 19th year as king of Babylonia. About a month later, Nebuchadnezzar's office in charge of the guards arrived in Jerusalem. His name was Nebuzaradan, and he burned down the, to the Lord's temple, the king's palace, and every important building in the city, as well as all the houses. Then he ordered the Babylonian soldiers to break down the walls around Jerusalem. He led away the people left in the city, including everyone who had become loyal to Nebuchadnezzar, the rest of the skilled workers, and even some of the poor people of Judah. Only the very poorest were left behind to work the vineyards and the fields. Nebuzaradan ordered his soldiers to go to the temple and take everything made of gold or silver, including bowls, fire pans, sprinkling bowls, pans, lampstands, dishes for incense, and the cups for wine offerings. The Babylonian soldiers took all the bronze things used for worship at the temple, including the pans for hot ashes, and the shovels, lamp snuffers, sprinkling bowls, and, and dishes for incense. The soldiers also took everything else made of bronze, including the two columns that stood in front of the temple, the large bowl called the sea, the twelve bulls that held it up, and the movable stands. The soldiers broke these things into pieces so they could take them to Babylonia. There was so much bronze that it could not be weighed. For example, the columns were about 27 feet high and 18 feet around. They were hollow, but the bronze was about 3 inches thick. Each column had a bronze cap over seven feet high that was decorated with bronze designs. Some of these designs were like chains and others were like pomegranates. There were 96 pomegranates evenly spaced around each column and a total of 100 pomegranates were located above the chains. Next, Nebuzaradan arrested Seriah, the chief priest, Zephaniah, his assistant, and three temple officials. Then he arrested one of the army commanders, seven of King Zedekiah's personal advisors, and the officer in charge of gathering the troops for battle. He also found 60 more soldiers who were still in Jerusalem. Nebuzaradan led them to Riblah in the land of Hamath, where Nebuzaradan had, killed, had them killed. The people of Judah no longer lived in their own country. People of Judah taken prisoner. Here is a list of the number of the people that, of Judah that Nebuchadnezzar took to Babylonia as prisoners. In his seventh year as king, he took 3,023 people. In his 18th year as king, he took 832 from Jerusalem. In his 23rd year as king, he, his officer, Nebuchadnezzar, took 745 people. So Nebuchadnezzar took a total of 4,600 people from Judah to Babylonia. Jehoiachin is set free. Jehoiachin is a, it was a prisoner in Babylon for 37 years. Then Ebu Merodach became king of Babylonia. And in the first year of his rule, on the 25th day of the, 20th, of the 12th month, he let Jehoiachin out of prison. Ebu Merodach was kind to Jehoiachin and honored him more than any of the other kings held prisoner there. Jehoiachin was allowed to wear regular clothes instead of a prison uniform, and he even ate at the king's table every day. As long as Jehoiachin lived, he was paid a daily allowance to buy whatever he needed. Mm. That's the end of the book of Jeremiah. The next book we'll be starting will be the book of Lamentations. Lamentations. You all tell your loved ones that you love them. When I promise tomorrow, not even the rest of this day, tell them all about Father God who gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for all our sins. He didn't die for one or some. He died for us all. Please give your life to Christ Jesus if you haven't already. What are you waiting for? Choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. Okay, Father God says, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. That is not something up for grabs or debate. Or debate. That is something we all must do, not up for discussion either. It's something we all must do, so please do it. And remember, your neighbors that live next to you, those are your neighbors. Love them as you love yourself. But not only that, anywhere that you go, those near you are your neighbors. Please love them as you love yourself. And please treat others the way that you want to be treated, with love and respect. That's the least we can do. Right? I love you all to love of the Lord. And Father God loves you more. You all have yourself a beautiful, blessed day. Children of all ages, youngest to oldest alike, God bless you. Bye-bye.